Hey kids, welcome to Northside Kids Online. I'm glad you're here with us again this week. Today we began a brand new series. This new series is entitled Real Love. And in this series, we're going to learn four things. The first thing today, we're going to learn that God loves everyone. Next week, we're going to see that I can show God's love by being kind. In our third week, we're going to talk about how I can show God's love even when it's hard. And on our last week, we're going to discover that love is always the best choice. So again, today we start with God loves everyone. He didn't just pick me and this person and you and somebody else. God loves all of us. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God loves each of us. You're sitting at home right now. God loves you. All right, so here's what I need you to do. Normally, I have a 60-second video where you go grab your Bibles and open it up to a specific passage. We're going to do that, but I need you to get two other things today, okay? I need you to get a piece of paper, and I need you to get something to write with, okay? Because here's what's going to happen today. We're going to be using the word love a lot. We're going to have it in our video uh, a Bible story. We're going to hear it from Mr. Gideon. We're going to hear it from Miss Sarah. We're going to have it in our songs. Today, I want you to try to count out how many times we say the word love, okay? The best thing for you to do is just watch the video, okay? Just sit there, watch the video like you always do and sing along and stuff, and then watch us again. And every time you hear the word love, I want you to make a little mark on your sheet of paper, okay? And when the video's over with, I want you to count all those marks out. Then, I want you to have your mom or dad send me an email or a text message and let me know how many you came up with, okay? Because we're going to give a prize out to the person who either got it exactly right or the person who was the closest. So... I'm going to give you 60 seconds. Go get your Bible, open it up to John chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. Then I want you to grab a pen or a pencil or a crayon or something to write with and a piece of paper. got a game for you. It's called Chalk Draw. Can you guess the perfect pair before time runs out? Okay, they're going to draw some pictures for us. You have to guess what the pictures are before the countdown clock gets to zero.
It's time to see who's having birthdays this week. First up, it's Tate. Tate's birthday is on February the 7th, and Tate is going to be 10 years old. Next is Gabby. Gabby's birthday is on February the 8th, and Gabby is going to be 9 years old. Parker's birthday is on February the 10th, and he's going to be 6. Jayton's birthday is also on February the 10th, and he's going to be 10. Emma Elise's birthday is on February the 7th, and she's going to be 7 years old. Finally, we have one very special birthday. It's Miss Sarah's birthday this week. Her birthday is on February the 8th. Happy birthday, Miss Sarah, and happy birthday to all of you. We have a new Bible verse for this new series, and it's found in 1 John chapter 4, verse 11. It's way back in the back of your Bible, okay? So 1 John chapter 4, verse 11. It says, Dear friends, since God loved us that much, surely we ought to love each other. Let me say that to you again. That's 1 John chapter 4, verse 11. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, Surely we ought to love each other. Hi guys, it's Miss Sarah. I'm glad to be with you guys again this week. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever it is when you're tuning in with us. We are so glad that you have joined us today. All right, so we have a new series of lessons and they all have to do with God's love. This week we'll be talking about how God loves everyone. When I thought of songs that go with that message, what better song than God so loved the world? That has our John 3.16 verse that I know a lot of you have memorized. If you haven't, it would be a great one to start with. Okay, so it's God so loved the world. He gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. All right, this song is so fun. It has kind of a funky little groove in it that you can have fun with. So get up and dance, do the motions. But most importantly, remember, God loves everyone, the whole world, not just us, not just our church, not just our families, or not even just Christians. He loves the whole world and wants everyone to know him. Let's sing.
God so loved the world, he sent his one and only son, that whoever would believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life with him in heaven. I love John 3, 16. All right, we're going to continue. We're going to speed it up a little bit, and we're going to sing the Jesus Loves Me Rock. So it's not the old school Jesus loves me. This one is a faster version that is a little crazy and you get to have fun and dance around with it. So when we get to the chorus, it's gonna spell out Jesus. You're gonna make a J, put your hands out to the sides and bring your foot up, J. And then E, you're gonna put your arms out and let's see if I can get one foot up there. <laughs> one foot, E. S is like the snake. And then of course U. And then S again spells Jesus, but it's Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. Of course, those words are from the little, when you're little and you hear that growing up, Jesus loves me song, but this is not that average one as we just said. So let's have fun with this. Let's jump up. I would love if you guys could get your parents or whoever's with you to send videos to Mr. Ryan of you guys doing this one, spelling out Jesus. That'd be awesome. We love seeing what you guys are doing at home. Let's have fun with this. Jesus loves me rock. slow it down a little bit and we're going to sing your love is so again we're talking about God and his love how much he loves us and this song is perfectly describing that love it says your love is deep and you're gonna get down and push down all the way down to the ground his love is deep his love is high reach way up as high as you can your love is long stretch one hand out in front and one hand back and your love is wide. You're going to stretch your arms as far out to the sides as you can. But remember, even though we think that's pretty long, how we can stretch our arms out, that's just saying, as far as I can stretch, it's further and further and further beyond that. It can't be measured. There's no way we could ever put a number on how much he loves us. It's limitless. It's unending. So let's sing Your Love Is, remembering He loves us that much.
Hey kids, it's Gideon, and I got a few questions for you tonight. One, are we able to measure how much God loves us with some measuring cups? Are we able to measure how high God loves us and how high that love goes? Are we able to measure for how long God loves us and be able to you know, time it with our stopwatches? No, of course not. Because if we tried to measure how much God loves us, well, these measuring cups would be overflowing. If we could measure how high God's love went, well, of course, it's gonna be higher than the heavens. If we were able to measure for how long God would love us, well, that's forever. And eventually this stopwatch is gonna run out. God loves us so much that the real only measuring that we can have is the cross. God loved us so much that he sent his one and only son to save us from our sins. And that son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for us for us, you and me, and not only you and me and us, but for the whole world, that the whole world could be saved from their sins if we would just believe in him. So God's love is so much that we measure by the cross, but again, it's not just for you and me, it's for everyone. God loves everyone. Jesus had traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. One night, a religious man came to see Jesus. The man's name was Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He studied and taught God's laws, and he tried very hard to obey the law. Nicodemus wanted to know more about Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we know that you have come from God. You are a teacher, and no one could do the miracles you do unless God is with him. Nicodemus had that right. Jesus said, I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now Nicodemus was confused. He thought that keeping all God's laws was how a person got into heaven. Besides, what Jesus said didn't make any sense. How can anyone be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Jesus said, a man cannot enter God's kingdom unless he is born of water and the spirit. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. When a baby is born, he gets physical life from his parents. Physical life doesn't last forever, but the spirit gives people spiritual life so they can live with God forever. Jesus said, don't be surprised I told you that you must be born again. Nicodemus still didn't understand. How is this possible, he asked. Jesus replied, we talk about what we know, and we tell others about what we have seen, but you don't believe what I'm telling you. When you don't believe what I say about things I've seen on earth, how will you believe what I say about things I've seen in heaven? No one has ever gone up into heaven except the Son of Man. He came down from heaven. Do you remember how Moses raised up the bronze snake in the wilderness? Everyone who looked at it was healed, like that, the Son of Man will be raised up so that everyone who believes in Him will have eternal life. Then Jesus told Nicodemus about God's great plan. Jesus said, God showed His love in this way. He sent His one and only Son to save the world. Everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but will have eternal life. God didn't send His Son to declare the world guilty, but to save the world. Anyone who believes in Him is found not guilty, but anyone who does not believe in Him is guilty already. Nicodemus needed new life, eternal life, but he could not do anything to earn it. Eternal life is a gift that comes only from God. God showed his love in this way. He sent his one and only son to save the world. Everyone who believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. All right, y'all, so for our Bible study this time, we're gonna be turning in our Bibles to John chapter three, 
verses 1 through 21. Now, kids, if you remember, John's in the New Testament. So we're going to start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, then John. It's the fourth gospel. And we're going to turn to chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. And we're going to read about a man named Nicodemus. Now, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Now, if you don't know, Pharisees were supposed to be experts of God's law and all things religion for the Jewish people. And Pharisee was someone that the Jewish people turned to to know what God wanted, his law and how to follow God's law. So Nicodemus was a very educated person, but I'll tell you, when he met Jesus, he realized he didn't know as much as he thought. When he met Jesus, he, he wanted to know so much more that he snuck out at night to meet with Jesus and listen to Jesus' teaching. And Jesus completely taught him something new because Nicodemus didn't know that God's love was for everyone. And whenever Jesus had t explained to him God's plan for the whole world to save the whole world, he learned that night that God's love was for everyone, not just for the Jewish people, but for everyone, including him as a Pharisee, and including everyone, that is still the way it is today. God's love is for all people. Thank you, Gideon, and thank you, Sarah. Kids, let's go over that Bible verse one more time. Remember, it's in 1 John chapter 4, verse 11. It says, Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. God loves you and me so much that he gave his son Jesus to come down here, live a perfect life, to be beaten and crucified and to be risen again on the third day for you and for me. That's an amazing, amazing sign of God's love for us. He gave up his most precious son for you. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he loves each of us. Okay, well, it's just about time to go. How many times have I said the word love, including that time? How many times have you counted out that I have said that word? I won't say it again, that word. We're going to be looking for your mom and dad to send me a text or an email with uh, how many you came up with, and then we're going to have a special prize uh, for the person or persons who get the closest to the number of the words love that you hear in this video. Not see, but what you hear in this video. All right? Before we leave, we need to pray, okay? We need to thank God for the love that he has given us through his son Jesus, okay? So bow your heads, whatever you're doing right now. Put your pencils down, your Bible, whatever else you might be playing with. Let's bow our heads as a sign of respect to God. Let's close our eyes to shut out any distractions around us, and let's talk to God, okay? Dear Lord, thank you so much for the love that you have shown us through your Son. God, we didn't deserve Jesus coming down here and going through what he went through. But you love us. You love each of us. And we're important to you. Thank you, God, for that great love. That love that we just can't understand, but that you give to us anyway. I pray, God, if there's any boys and girls that are out watching this video now that don't feel your love in their life, Lord, that you would, you would reach down and you would show them your love. God, I pray for moms and dads that they would share your love with their children. Lord, we love you. And through this series, we hope to see how much you love us and how you want us to love others. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen. All right, it's time to go. I'll see you back here next week. Bye-bye.